heritage points. Now, I will tell you guys again, it sucks to stay out in the bushes for 12 hours in mosquito abundant areas looking for stuff. So you want to do your homework and you want to establish good vantage points. The other thing we have to do is look for counter surveillance. Some of the information that was provided to us indicated that his girlfriend liked to go out with him and that his girlfriend liked to play lookout. So we needed to watch for that. But the main thing why we needed to do surveillance is again, we needed to observe the violation go down. So this is what we saw. A little while into our surveillance, we actually saw the suspect approach the water with a canvas bag, remove a net, and throw it into the waters. A couple of seconds later, he retrieved the net. It was filled with fish. But at the same time we saw that go down, one of our surveillance teams saw their girlfriend sitting in the car with her hand on the horn, ready to sound it. So looking at what we had to do with, we knew that there was a couple of laws in play. For one thing, Rule 1334-2, Hawaii Administrative Rules, that prohibits the, the illegal take and, and illegal methods of take within Pukukia Marine Life Conservation District, namely the use of the throw net and the take of the fish. And we also knew in looking at the net he was using, that it was on their sides. So the next step was to contact him. Whenever officers contact people, officer safety is a big deal. Okay? We want to make sure we're safe when we approach. In this case, this guy's standing on the, the edge of the uh, shoreline, right in the water. So that presents some challenges when you want to make your approach because anytime you're around water, it presents a very unsafe situation. So we have to take that into account. When we made the approach, we wanted to inspect his throw net and his fish. We found both to be in violation. Therefore, I issued the citation to this guy. But the other second part of the coin on this was the girlfriend. We needed to eliminate her because we didn't want her sounding the alarm and blowing us. Therefore, we have to make the approach simultaneously and stop her from blowing the horn, remove her from the vehicle, and evaluate what her role in this is. Is she an accessory? After we issued the citation, we have to turn to the vehicle. We knew it was being used as a base of his operations. We could see fishing gear and tackle in plain view. There was also some small amounts of marijuana and paraphernalia. We knew we needed to seize the vehicle as evidence. However, the concern was our suspect and his girlfriend used the vehicle as a home. Therefore, as a humanitarian gesture, we allowed them to remove certain personal items prior to us seizing it as evidence. After we seized the, uh, the uh, vehicle, we then determined that we needed to do a search warrant in order to fully prove that the vehicle was using as a base of its as a base of operations for illegal activity. And so I had to sit there and write a search warrant. And uh, let me tell you, I come from a background where I had worked a, a, a few prior dope cases in the military. And when you write a search warrant for drugs, it's vastly different from writing a search warrant for conservation law violations. And so a conservation officer has to fully understand the methods of take, different fishing gear works in order to write in a warrant how these things come into play. And so you have to write it narrowly and specifically because of Fourth Amendment implications would state that you have to particularly describe the places to be searched and the items to be seized. We also have to include in there a 24-hour language because our prosecutors wanted that. And when we took it down to get it reviewed by our prosecutor, they reviewed it intensely. And the reason why they did that was because our prosecutors are not uh, very knowledgeable about conservation law violations. So when they see a warrant coming their way for a conservation law violation, they tend to scrutinize that more heavily than others. And then finally, we got the judge to sign on, and we searched the car. 
We found a whole bunch of stuff, took it all into evidence, and proved that he was using the car as a base of operations. And so we finally did an asset forfeiture action. Again, because our prosecutors are more familiar with asset forfeiture pertaining to narcotics, they're not very familiar for asset forfeiture due to conservation laws, so we ended up having to closely coordinate with them. We have to follow certain legal requirements relating to time and due notice. We have to come up with a report that lays it down, how we have to prove the vehicle was used to facility or actually used in the commission of the crime, and we have to make public notice of the intent to forfeit. So in the end, what happened? Our suspect was found guilty of the Marine Life Conservation District violations. Because he was indigent, he couldn't pay a fine, he was placed on probation, ordered to perform community service. In the end, it was, it was evaluated. He did not charge the girlfriend. There were no charges for the drugs and paraphernalia that we found, a little bit too small. But the trailblazer, his throw net, and all the fishing gear in the vehicle were ordered forfeited to the state. So there was uh, reasonable action taken to deprive this guy of future conservation violations. That's the DV case, folks. Hope that gave you a little glimpse as to what life is like for a conservation officer. Be happy to take any questions. Sorry, Mark. Um, do you have any mitigation process in your division? with the AG's office, because back home we have that. Uh, we'd rather have them pay the fines or work community service instead of filling our name on a lot of vehicles. Unless he's a repeat offender, then we, regardless of his status, we go for forfeiture. Yeah, we, we, uh, we do work closely with our prosecutors and our attorney general. Um, every case is evaluated differently and on its own merits. Um, it just so happens in this case, we have to deprive him of the vehicle because the vehicle is going to be used to further the criminal act. And in order to stop the damage to the, the resources, the vehicle has to go. Um, but we do have, um, there's other means. We can go civil with the guy. Um, that's, that's one means. That the civil system wasn't in play back then as prevalently as it is today. But that was also another option we could have went. Great, because that's part of our civil litigation process as well. Also, uh, maybe you can develop a conservation fund that these uh, fees, fines and fees, go into this fund specific for conservation. That's what we have on Guam. And it's online if you want to model, use it as a template for yourselves. Well, thank you. I, I do appreciate that. We do have a, uh, a, a special do care fund that is set up. However, it continues to be a work in progress and we'll definitely be looking at um, those types of things in the future. True. <laughs> yeah, real quick, you mentioned about the vehicle, and I really wanted to make sure that it was you were shown just why it was used as a perpetrator of the, of the violation. Is I was like kind of under the assumption that it's kind of considered they use their vehicle to get there at all. It's considered use of that. Is that not necessarily the case? It may not necessarily be the case. The real bottom line with all of it is you got to convince the judge. I'm just wondering, did this make the press in any way? I didn't hear anything, but that doesn't really mean anything. I'm just curious if it got out to the public to act as future deterrence. As far as the news story, no, it didn't get out to the to the uh, news media. However, when we did the asset forfeiture thing, there was actual public notice. But again, who reads public notices, right? <laughs> Thanks a lot. In case, uh, uh, Chad, I think we got one more, one more question, then we'll take a break. Uh, Michael, without the Thank you. Did you or did anyone in the bouquet and LCD notice a difference in compliance with the regulations following this arrest? Yeah, it would be hard to measure the change, but I mean, this this actual incident occurred about six years ago. So, 
I'm not sure if there actually was a measurable change or not. Thank you. Questions? Thanks, Jason. Thank you.